are watching Revelations, we are the biggest spiritual platform. We talk everything Ghanaian, everything blacks, everything Africa. We care. Like if I am you perceive you. Eh, in the end, there is a special episode. In the end, and come on, be sorry, because conversation is going to take English and Ga, and I'm forced to speak Ga today. In the no, a very hupa. Now, so you have a call. Today's episode, I think, is a special one because I don't know yet your first guest ever. Ah, who free that particular side now, Oba. And my first guest free that side, I hear you very important to me. And to hear you here now, free in Crown Four, near Omo Makani now, so they are welcome. I had the language barrier be any, and I hope be out to me. Eka, once again, I welcome you to the biggest spiritual platform. We are Revelations, and my name is Mami Grace. Today we have a great man here with us. He's Numo Tete Diaka. 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 Yo, Numo, welcome to Revelations. Thank you. Okay, please greet our viewers and your people. Okay. All viewers, I also welcome you once again to the show. Mm -hmm. And then to my um Chemi, my name, my name Kenami, Nimba, Nifenya de Mani, Miha Mani. Okay, so Numo is going to take us through why our traditional worship is nearing extinction. And I just said, Yeah, has some no, yeah, bonu do kutun to me, yeah, bonu din bonne, ye yin no tochene, just say, eh, yeah, I see a cray yashi. The Osi or Yen so are on turning a hoon ye, I didn't hear. We and our only a quack called discuss it and there. And to Numo, when you say why our traditional worship is nearing extinction, what do you mean? Okay, what I simply mean by that particular phrase is that there are people that are supposed to practice that particular religion, but due to some one or two things, they decide or they decided to leave that particular religion out. Aside that, too, there are some particular traditional leaders too who are also not doing their work well. Due to that, majority do not see the enticement of the um, uh, traditional religion for them to draw nearer to. So this is what brought about this particular issue that when you try to watch with your, with, with your eyes, you are going to realize that the traditional religion itself is getting nearer to extinction. So that's what brought out this particular topic today. Okay, so why are people practicing it wrongly and why are your people not protecting it? Okay, people are practicing it wrongly because one, they do not know of um, the dogma and then the doctrines of that particular worship. And I'll say some of my people, not pertaining to those um, of us within Greater Accra, but if I say my people, anyone at all practicing the traditional religion is my person because I'm a traditionalist, that particular person is also a traditionalist. So some people are not doing it right because, like I said earlier, they don't know the dogma and the ways uh, 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 of that particular worship. Others too are not practicing it um, well to the point where it's supposed to entice others to grow nearer to them. Okay, mm -hmm. so now take us through who and who has the right to practice this and how good do you think they should have been practicing it for people to have interest in it? Okay. So the first question, everyone is entitled to get access to or to practice the traditional African spirituality or traditional African religion. It's not limited to anybody. Despite that fact, we have those that we might say they are key leaders because in every particular organization, we have those that are supposed to lead. So when those people are intact, they are those that are going to see you through they are those that are going to correct and then those that are going to guide your path. Uh -huh. The goodness of the whole thing is that we are supposed to save, we are supposed to bring out the culture or the traditional, particular traditional religion with humility, with uh, diligence and then with dignity. So as it don't be like, why should I leave Christianity or Islam to come and follow you? After all, one, you are like this, you are like this, you are like that. In my religion it's not so. Or my act of worship is not so. So why should I leave mine and follow you or follow yours? Okay, tell us the process. You are one of them now. Yeah. How, how did, when did you decide to do this and why? Okay, actually I didn't choose to do this personally. It was a calling. Uh -huh. Within the Ghana traditional system, many a times it's a calling. When the calling doesn't come, that's when maybe someone is appointed to take over. 
Uh -huh. But um, um, putting that aside, I can say that um, many people <laughs> are supposed to, uh, 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 how do you put it, um, follow the right full steps. Now, if I should move on, um, we have hierarchy within the traditional religion that people are supposed to understand. Uh -huh. Because that particular uh, traditional religion itself, it is not a religion, I would say it's a spirituality. And then spirituality itself, it's linked up with morality. So that means that whatever you practice spiritually should reflect in your moral life. Uh -huh. So talking about the hierarchy, we have the ranges, because we are spiritual people, so we deal with spiritual people too as well. We have the ranges which, uh, which is intersect, whereas we have God Almighty, whereby we have um, um, our divinations or we have our divinities. And then the third aspect is where we have our ancestors. So once you're able to know this particular route or this particular step, for you to start your worship or for you to call upon them in times of danger or in times of need becomes so simple and so easy for you. It becomes so simple and so easy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. So these three things, mm -hmm. God, divinity, mm -hmm. and um, Our ancestors. Ancestors. How do you practice each and every one, and how do you combine them? Okay. Now, how do we practice them in various aspects? For God, we've taken God, or we see God as a universal being. He doesn't have a gender. Unlike the way other religions do put it that God is a man, because man was created first pair, their belief. We have it that God doesn't have a gender, and it's a, 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 it's a central um, um, supreme being in whatever we do. I would like my viewers to also understand this thing that whenever a traditionalist sees God, it's not referring to the God of the church or the God of the mosque. It's referring to the power that created the entire universe and everything within it. The creator. So, yes, the creator. So looking at the way things are done, we call upon God first, then followed by our uh, divinities. Now, when we say the divinities, they are, they are spiritual people or, yes, in that particular aspect, they are spiritual people that live within us. Now, there's a border between the living and then the spiritual people. So out of that particular border, they come out to come and visit once in a while to see what is going on. Whenever there's a message, they'll come to that particular aspect, come and deliver their message, do whatever they want to do, and then report back to their almighty God who sent them. In other words, they are also angels. When you come to the traditional religion, we refer to them as Wuwoi or Jimawoji. They are angels. Then to the other side, which is the last one, we have our ancestors. Those that we venerate them. They are people that are supposed to be venerated. So when you are going through any, any type of difficulty and then you are failing to venerate or to call upon them, they also be at their somewhere relaxing, watching you do whatever you want to do. They also be there watching to see whether whatever you want to do will go on successful, uh, successful with you or not. So this is how the thing is supposed to be done. And this is how it's done. So you call God, you call angels, and you call your ancestors. Yes, you combine them together. Can I call them ghosts? Um, actually, they are not ghosts. Because when you say ghosts, um, they are spirits of people that are dead, that try to reveal themselves to you. Now, you cannot say someone is a ghost whereby you have not seen the person or the spirit revealing itself to you. No, you can't tell that particular person as a ghost. And for you to become an ancestor, it's not by the case whereby you die any type of death. You can't commit suicide and call yourself an ancestor. You have to one, make sure that you die a natural death. You have offsprings. And then society also knows you as well. As well. So such a person, once you die, you are automatic, automatically qualified to become or to be called an ancestor. Okay. And whenever people are in need, they can venerate you with their divinities and then the most high God. And whatever you are looking for will be done for you. Will be done for you. Um, before, before you hear someone saying, I am a wulum, mm -hmm. like you are now, mm -hmm. that person should be 50, 60, thereabout. How, what happened to you? <laughs> Actually, people have been asking this particular question, but it's a whole lot of story because if I may remember, about two, three years ago, I had a series of dreams. Dreams that I'm being ushered into, people call it shrines, but I don't see it as a shrine, it's a temple. Okay. Yeah, because Christians also use that particular way, shrines. The Roman Catholics also do so. They have that particular way, it's also called shrines. So I see that it's in a particular aspect that I'm being pushed into one of these temples. I only wake up and I just report, and it's like, it can't be true. So I just take my mind off. But the thing went on consecutively for, uh, cons consecutively for about um, 16, 17 times in forms of dreams. Aside that, there were other things that I saw with my own eyes 
that compelled me to understand that no, whatever is happening here is not anything I'm supposed to take as a joke. I remember there was even one time I was on my way to answer the score when I heard one particular pastor preaching about scandals, and I was like, oh, let me just go and sit down there to listen to him. Upon getting there, I heard him say the same thing of which I've had a series of dreams about. So I was like, no, this thing, there's really something about it. There's really something strong about it. So it was one of these days I was just sleeping when I saw someone, okay, in my dream, the person was like, hey, get up, come, follow me. So I just got up and I followed the person. Before I realized, I was in my family's temple. And by so doing means that once I have entered, I have to be initiated and I have to take the mantle to start serving. So that's why I'm like that. I'm just 25. You are, I know you are just 25, so you started worshiping. So this man is a teacher, actually. It's not that he doesn't have anything to do and he decided to become like this, to get food to eat. He was a teacher, and I know. You didn't know I know about this, right? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he was a teacher, so for him to make this decision, it's, um, it might be something he has really seen. Okay, so this particular worship that you've entered into, you, you've not grown into it. Are there challenges in it? So far, I haven't seen any particular challenge. For yet? Yet, I haven't seen any particular challenge. Because the only thing I was thinking of was that, what would the school see or how would the school behave or understand if they should see me maybe coming to the school barefooted? Because that's the only odd thing about we blow me. Uh -huh. But when I got to the, uh, the school, I realized that there are people that also have their system of beliefs. They can't condemn mine. I can't condemn this. They are supposed to accept me for who I am now. And then they did so. But prior to that, they only gave me a condition that since we are working with various aspects of um, um, parents in the school, we have to get things clearer for them to understand. And then they gave me a condition that when I, whenever I'm supposed to report to school, I'm supposed to be in my shoe. And that's the only thing. And whenever I report home, my shoes are off. But I, I'm even proud to tell you that there are times that I even get to the school and just feel like, why don't you take off the shoes and just walk barefooted? <laughs> and I just take the shoes off and I just walk. And, and they're like, are you walking barefooted? I just tell them, I don't feel like wearing the shoes. So I take the shoes off. So you still go to school? Yeah, I still teach. You still teach? Yes, and I teach, I'm proud of that. Uh, mm -hmm. No, you wear your, yeah. this. Oh, actually, we have school uniforms. Okay. So from Monday to Friday, we wear our uniforms. But whenever we have Saturday classes, Saturdays are days I also go to worship. So right after my worship, I just get out in my traditional regalia. I pick up my staff and I just head over to school. Ah. People are even surprised. Just stand there and watch. Ah, you see a teacher, you see a ulomu. So it's like, they just don't know how to even get nearer to me to ask. But for my students, they're always, always, always proud of me. Wherever they see me, they just shout, no much away, no much away. You understand? This is uh -huh. beautiful. So why don't you people wear shoes? You see, the main thing is that we Ga people and our system of belief itself was introduced to us by nature. It has been existing a long time ago. And uh, um, if you watch, I think within the first five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, majority of these particular passages talk about this Wulome from um, 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 the Jewish side. I remember even they even have a festival they call, they call Yom Kippur, whereby um, whenever someone commits a crime, the day of atonement, they are supposed to get a fowl, speak whatever, and let the fowl go, or maybe kill the fowl. The same thing is also being done here. So we have some kind of link or linkage with them. Aside that, too, we can also relate this particular aspect to um, and the story of Moses, whereby he was ordered to take off his shoes because whatever he's getting to is a holy ground. And to we as Ulome, we believe ourselves, or we don't believe ourselves, but we know ourselves to be holy people. And we believe that we can invoke the presence of the Most High God at every particular ground. For, for that particular reason, it's like a military man who is always prepared to go to battle. You, you, you may not know, you just be there, you just have a, 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 an emergency call. Oh, you are needed over here now. Will you say, I now have to take off my shoes, some lace? No, 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 no. Once I walk in barefooted, you are good to go. And I said that to walking, walking barefooted also have this kind of health benefit that people do not know. Hey, family, let's look at this. So, how nice, uh, how nice are you saying? 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 How I mean, energy, vibration, you know. Like, how do you feel? Hmm? Can we practice this? Anyway, me, I'm, I'm just happy that you are still teaching and you are still doing this. So, uh, this thing that you practice, how good does it help the people around you, the people of Ghana, 
I mean, a day benefit in a womb. Okay. Okay. What kind of people do you help with the gift? With this particular gift and position, we help everybody, be it a native and non-native. We help everybody. Because me, for instance, whenever I go to my temple to pray, I pray for everybody. Those that are Christians, even pastors that stand to speak evil against our divinities, I pray for them. Hmm. Mm, I do. I pray for everybody. I pray that whatever I get, the kind of benefit I get, should also be the same thing on them. To those that are in the, hosp uh, in the hospitals, whenever I'm feeling sick, the energy that heals me should be the same energy that also should also get to the hospital to, to heal them out of their sick beds. Hmm. So with this particular one, it's a great benefit. It has, it has a whole lot of stuff. At the same time, too, it's like whenever things are wrong and then you get to understand and then you believe within yourself, once you just raise up your mouth or your voice to even speak, things change. Okay, now let's come to the side that nobody wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. Are there any sacrifice? Are there any deity, particular deity that demands stuff? Okay. Many people see the traditional religion as a sacrifice-based, um, idol-based. Now, I want everyone watching us today to know this, that we, those that practice traditional African religion, we are animists. Animists in the sense that we believe that the Most High God placed energies in, into natural things that he created by himself. So things like trees, water bodies, rocks, the feminaries, so, so many things, we believe in them. Because we believe those particular things contain power. That can help human. Now, um, looking at the way things are done, you cannot offer sacrifice to a tree. It may depend. Looking at the way things are done, it may depend. Now, people see it as idol, idolatry or idol worshiping. No particular um, um, traditional African religion has idol or idolism based or idolism attached to it. But those things over there may be used as um, oracles, not as a divinity or as a divination or as, as a divine spirit, but as an oracle. Another sect that works below the divine beings. So those ones are only there to assist that particular person who has taken it upon himself to practice the traditional world, African religion. But to those that have been called, those that are, uh, practice the animism, uh, animism aspect, for them, they offer no sacrifice. They may only offer sacrifice when something has occurred within the community and the need has occurred or the need has come, whereby a divinity has come down upon its flesh and has spoken this and this and this and this and this. For that reason, get these leaves, set this water here, add this particular animal to appease for whatever is going on wrong in the community. And by so doing, everything is going to be fixed. Aside that, there's no sacrifice anyway. And I don't even term, term that particular one as sacrifice. Because in every particular religion, one way or the other, there are sacrifices. I even remember the, uh, uh, a portion of the Bible where it was said that Jesus Christ was sacrificed for humans to be saved. That means in every particular aspect of religion, there are sacrifices. Those that want to found, uh, uh, found uh, this particular religion, Islam, also claim that uh, God told um, um, uh, Muhammad. Uh, Abraham to sacrifice uh, his son, Isaac. Isaac. And through that, they also got... It's the same thing. There are sacrifices everywhere. I hope your sacrifice doesn't have anything to do with the Isaacs and the Jesuses. Oh, no, 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 no. Even at church, they even do sacrifices nowadays. Not nowadays. Like, they have been doing sacrifices. They will tell you, bring offer tree. Offer tree is a, is a form of, of, of sacrifice. So as you are giving out your money, you are sacrificing. But maybe we want you or anything wrong with you to, to be fixed. We can't tell you bring money. Because the deities over there are not going to accept the money. No. They don't accept money. They don't accept the money. So what, what and what? Now, things they accept are the animals which are going to be used in, in form of um, sacrifices. Uh -huh. Which are going to be used to purify you. Once those things are done, they are done forever. Once those things are solved, they are solved forever. It's not anything of that sort whereby we just say that oh, on every particular weekend base, you have to take this animal there. If someone should travel all the way to Benin to go and buy anything of that sort, that particular one, that's what the person wants to worship. That one, when it comes to traditional religion, we term that one as voodoo. That's how it's being referred to. Mm -hmm. Those ones, they require daily based sacrifices based on the one worshipping. But with the one that we Ga people have, and, and, and the ones that other people that have the idea of animism practice, we don't always give our sacrifices unless the need arises. Unless the need arises. Yeah. It's always animal. Yes. It's nothing else. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing yeah. less. Yeah. 
Okay, so since you started, mm -hmm. what are, what difficult what are some difficult situations someone has brought to you, and you were able to sort it, and you were so joyous. Hmm. Here in this case, majority of this one in Ghana, we term those one as komi and minisajin. That means issues within the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not all that we can bring out. Mm -hmm. But if I can just just um, one, be. just say something little about that particular aspect. Mm -hmm. I remember once a lady came over. Was there, was there, no, there was a man that came over, actually. There are many. And he was like, from where he was, or where he was staying at that particular workplace, work wasn't going on well for him. So he went to church, and the pastor told him to come over to his family house for the priest in charge, or the high priest in charge, to go and pray for him. When I say pray over here, I'm not talking about Christian prayer or Islamic prayer. It's a traditional prayer. Every prayer is prayer. Okay. For the priest over there to pray for him. So he came to me. He, say, he, he came with the family elders at a, 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 at a point in time. We had to intercede on his behalf within the family house. It was done. And then some time later, I took him to the temple itself to go and pray for him over there. And once that particular thing was done, as I was praying, I noticed only one thing, that I developed goosebumps on my skin. That told me automatically within myself that whatever I'm doing over there has been accepted. Hmm. The man went, I've not heard from him, but within me, I know everything has been done and everything has been made whole. So it made you happy yeah. that you are able to help your own. So it's like um, people can come and consult you mm -hmm. to seek what and what and what okay, do so people come to you this for? is how the thing is done. When you take the traditional Ghana religion or the Ghana spirituality, we have at least two people in a shrine or in a temple. We have the medium on which the deity descends. And then we have the other one who takes charge of that particular place or the one that controls the deity that, that, that has descended. We will only are those that control the de deities that have descended. Oh, okay. And then our priestesses in Ghana, we, tell, we term them as Woyi, are the mediums that the deities descend upon. So when you need any consultation and then you get to me, I will link you to them or the woman will link you to that particular Woyi. Then the Woyi is going to tell you that, oh, okay, we are going to meet at this particular place. At this particular place, we consult the oracle or the divinity and then whatever they will say, that particular information we brought. And then we all sit down together and see how best that particular issue is going to be solved. So we, for instance, we are people that, um, I would say, we do, not, we do not call spirit. We do not, something of that sort. Those particular aspects are meant for the priest, uh, the priest and then the priestesses. We will only are high priests. They also have male mediums of deities. That's uh, the priests. And then the female ones are the priestesses. So you, what do you sit there for? Okay, we sit there for, I would say, the welfare of the temple. At the same time, to you as a priest, you're always supposed to be there in prayer to avert any kind of danger that may befall the community. Okay. Uh -huh. So that's one of our major rules. That's one of your major rules. Yeah. So, can you tell how many are you in Ghana? Okay, in Accra here. Oh, we are numerous. We have those that are even infants. Oh, yes, we have those that are even unborn. Yet, though, even though they are, on, they, are, they are not born, they have been chosen already. So once they step their foot on the soil, we know an ancestor has reincarnated. Those people are just taken to and then their rights have been performed for them. Oh, okay, so you people believe in reincarnation? Yes, that's one of our major dogma. Okay, tell me about it. So reincarnation, when somebody disconnects or dies, mm -hmm. where does the person go? Okay, we, we, within the traditional religion, we do not believe in the concept of heaven or hell. I want everyone watching today to understand this. I will not believe in heaven or hell. We only believe in two aspects, afterlife and in reincarnation. So when you die a natural death, you go over into the afterlife. And then when you are there for a particular period of time, you are reincarnated. With this particular reincarnation aspect, it may vary. It may be within your family or outside your family. But it's this same world that... The in this same world. Not another place. No. Can you debate this? Oh, I can debate this. Okay. All right. Good. I can debate this. Okay. So it occurs within your family. And people will not understand or people will not believe. But they're going to be like, with my religion, we say reincarnation is not true. Yet, if I watch this particular child... His or her behavior and that of my late grandfather are so similar. That, that is when um, the person might come to the concept that reincarnation might be true. 
the person will not believe until a divinity is being consulted. And that is where the divinity is going to reveal to you that this particular person you are seeing here was your late grandfather or was your late, late grandfather, eh, grandfather who, has, who has been reincarnated. In our cases over here, they are very common. They are very common. They are very, very common. Within the Gan society, they are very, very, very common. Because it's part of our religion. It's part of our spirituality. And then we believe, we don't believe, but we know. So once we go, we believe we are gone. By the right full time, we come back again. Disconnect and reconnect. Perfect. You are watching Revelations. And my name is Mami Grace. Today I'm here with one of the, I think I love him. I think I like him. I don't know what to say, but Numbo, ah, how can you be called Numbo? Numbo is a kokora, or? Oh. <laughs> you see, whenever we say Numbo, <laughs> under normal circumstances means an old man. Mm -hmm. Any old man at all, one, has experience, has intelligence, is a leader, and can step in to solve issues. So once you are being given this particular position or chance means that you are supposed to put these particular four factors into action. That's why you get that name, Numo. Aside that, you can also see me holding a staff. That means I'm young, though, but I'm still old. <laughs> you are young, though, but still old. Interesting conversation. Okay, so now let's look at spirituality of uh, the entire guns. Mm -hmm. Now Christianity is taking over your mm -hmm. land. Um, Islamic is taking over your mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. You consult your deities, you mm -hmm. consult your ancestors. Mm -hmm. Are there any issues, spiritual issues between the ancestors and how Christianity and other religions are taking over your land? Okay, with that I will say from our side there's no problem because history make, makes us uh, to know that then times, this uh, uh, traditional system of belief or religion was practiced by family. So, for instance, if it's Saturday for me to go and perform and write, is the whole family supposed to go with me to the place? But because of these Western religions, Christianity and Islam, people have now chosen to leave that particular aspect. They choose to go to their mosque or they choose to go to their churches. No problem. We, those that are in charge now, we go there to serve on their behalf. Uh -huh. We, again, do not have any problem because we believe that Akemo Kemo Uono Neyahu, I've been saying this always, I can't lift it alone. You join me and then we lift it what, together. So when you're a Christian and you come to me, I'll accept you. When a Muslim, uh, you're a Muslim too and you come to me, I'll accept you. But when you are a traditionalist and you get closer to them, they begin to neglect you. Christian will say that, yes, you are, you are a traditionalist. You can come to my church. No problem. But once you step into the church and you leave, that is when the pastor will be like, you are in the house, you won't come to church. And even, that's the word, and even the Wulomo came to church. And the warrior came to church, and you are here. Means that they see us, they see us to be um, something that I cannot even differentiate, I can't describe. They don't get nearer to us, but they expect us to get nearer to them. And when and, you go to problem. Yes. And for me, people have been coming to me and asking me, like, do you go to church? I just tell them I don't go to church. They ask me why. I tell them, spiritually, I see the church as a dirty place. Huh? Yes. Are you like joking or you are I'm serious? serious. Why? Explain. Because one. Whenever the church is practicing spirituality, the church is supposed to worship in truth and in spirit, not in truth and in flesh, or not flesh alone, but in truth and in spirit. And there are some things that occur within the church that causes the church to be dead spiritually. That's one. If a lady should step into the church while she's menstruating, it makes the church premises an impure place because you can't enter into me, my temple, with your menstruation. What will happen? <laughs> that one will leave it to God. <laughs> you understand that you've gone, you've gone some way. Secondly, majority of our Orthodox churches do take dead bodies into their church premises for services. And that's one of the things that make the whole premises, in fact, to be too, so, so dirty. Because, one, we will all men are not supposed to see dead bodies. Our, our, our divinities are also so clean to the extent that they are not even allowed to link up with dead things. Or leftover things. So why will you tell me, someone who is pure spiritually, to leave my place to come to your church? Maybe I would like you to be happy. But once I get to, I have to purify myself traditionally before I get back into my temple. If not, the consequences will be so grave. That is true. Mm. These two things. Oh, there are so so many. Uh, so give me like five. Will like you give five. me two. That, that <laughs> makes, what makes the church very dirty? Uh, I, this this particular two I've given you are the two concrete or the two solid ones that make the church. 
uh, an unclean place for an African traditional spirituality to enter. And At the same time, today, I think some of the churches that when you enter, things we do, things they tag as demonic, are the same things that are being done there. Which is? <laughs> so, so many. You One, they, they will tell you, as you are entering, entering into the church, you know where sleepers, you should enter into the church. Fine. There are some, they will tell you that when you enter, they are supposed to cover your hair. All those ones are good. They are the same thing that we also do practice over here. There are some that will even buff you up with herbs. They will tell you that the Bible said, eh, eat the fruit and use the leaves to cure sickness. It's a lie. We ask ourselves that when our ancestors were here, when the Bible was not, was not introduced here, those over here, were they not curing themselves with, with leaves? When they are eating fruit, that's the only thing used to cover it up. But when you sit down, down there to analyze them, you're going to understand that whatever we practice as African tradition, they've taken those particular things and then they've reconstructed those ones to suit themselves, making it look like it's Christ-based, but it's not. Hmm. So there are so, so many reasons. There, there are so, so many. So, so many you reasons. just can't list them. There are many. There are many. So when, when, when the people reject our traditions like this, mm -hmm. Because I'm a Ghanaian, it's our tradition. Like this, and they go and practice this same thing at places where they, they even add death. Like mm -hmm. you are saying, mm -hmm. dead bodies and mm -hmm. menstruations mm -hmm. there. The spirits and the deities we have here. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, like when you said when you go to church, you need to purify mm -hmm. yourself traditionally. But we, we go there and then mm -hmm. the spirits, the deities, do, do, do they have any issues with us? Does it cause any problems for us as members of a particular family? Okay. I'll say, in a way, I'll say no. Because you are not serving traditionally. You are not worshipping traditionally. You've accepted a different system of faith. Uh -huh. So once you want to come to my place, that means you have to purify yourself before you come, just like I also do. That's like you also do. So yeah. if, I, if I'm coming to your place, mm -hmm. is there a um, process that I need to go through? How do I purify myself before getting to you? Oh, with the purification, um, it's done with, within different aspects. We have the commonest one, whereby we burn this palm fronds or African incense. In Ghana, we call it machu. That's number one thing which is used for purification. And it's even surprising that some churches do use that particular one, the African incense. They burn it. That's what we used to purify the deities whenever they descend from their porous border into the human realm. So that particular one is one of the things that will be used to purify you. But once maybe after consulting the oracle and realize that there's something that is supposed to be purified spiritually within your soul, that is when maybe an animal may be used uh -huh, for, the, for the purification. Something of that sort. Aside that, we also set up leaves in a wooden bowl we call chisi. Some also call it chisi. Those leaves over there are also meant for uh, uh, bathing, which, which, which is also a symbol of purification. So it's either you go through um, the chisi, bathing, or you go to the machu, smoking, and then from there you become um, um, clean. Um, uh -huh, clean to enter into to that enter particular the temple. Yes. So that particular temple. are people still worshipping? Like, are people still coming to your temple? Mm, as of now, I would say no. Because of Western religion, because of a promised heaven and hell. Because of a promised um, seven heavens and then hell again. So rejecting our own and following this, is it causing us any troubles? So, so many troubles. Uh -huh. One, it has caused us to lack confidence in ourselves. As you are seeing, Ghana here, in Ghana here, we are suffering. It's not that we are suffering as pay. traditionalists are suffering. We as members of Ghana or Ghanaians are suffering. Mm -hmm. Because one, we've accepted the white man's feet. Things that go right from their aspect may go wrong within our aspect. But yes, so we close one eye on it and then we've accepted it. So whatever we're supposed to sit down to analyze ourselves, to understand and practice, we leave those ones and we're like, let me go after the white man. They will do it. Or their God will do it. Or their intermediary, that should be the correct word, their intermediary will do it. Meanwhile, once you sit down and then you put your mind together, things, are, things can be worked on and then... Everything is going to be successful. But it's like, hmm. Are the deities worried about us? Oh, yes, they do. They because do. One, one, that's one people, they, they, a set of people that I would say they are very jealous. They are jealous about anyone that comes within their community. I can use my community as an example. Wherever I go, I make, it, I make my, myself proud to everyone to understand that I'm from Boom. 
that makes me a gun. Although from our side, when you check um, 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 within the map, we are Dangwe people, the Bon people, but we speak Gan. We take uh, chosen ourselves, or we decided to call ourselves as Gan people. Huh? In my community, before I grew up, I've heard of the stories severally whereby people try to come into the town to kidnap. And once they kidnap, we have one of our deities over there. Before you cross that particular deity in the river for you to leave the, uh, the town to the outskirts, your engine dies there instantly. They are very jealous. Wherever you are, whenever you are in any particular trouble, and you mention their name, they just come inside to assist you because they understand that despite the fact that you are having a different perception about them and you are serving a different divinity or a different um, um, intermediary, you are still a member of them because you have their name or you have their family name as part of you. As you are coming, you are coming to them. As you are going, you also go back to you go out of this world through them. So they know who you are. So they love their own. Very well. Even if you're a stranger and you come to join the town, it's like you're under their care and their protection. So what they're going to do for, for their indigenous child is the same thing they're going to do for you. That's because you've come to their Perfect. domain. It's not within my town, but it's like throughout Greater Accra, the whole of the Greater Accra uh, region. That's how the thing is, is being done. You will not even call on them necessarily, necessarily, but before you realize, they come to your aid. Okay, you, you talk to them, you see them, I know. Mm -hmm. Is there that one thing they wish can be done in this country? Yes, that one thing they wish can be done is for we to identify ourselves as Ghanaians with our roots within the Ghanaian soil for us to see the need and the importance to go back to our traditional African religion. That's one of their wishes. One of their wishes. Yes. If we do that, what will happen? If we do that, in fact, it's going to cause so many things to progress. There's going to be unity. There's going to be love, togetherness. So, so many things. As of now, it's like because of these various religions we have, there is even no religious tolerance. Somebody will say that you are a traditionalist. And so if you die, you go to hell. Somebody will say you are a Muslim. If you die, you go to hell. But I'm asking myself this particular question that within our religion, we don't have heaven. We don't have hell. Christians have heaven and hell. So how come me, a traditionalist, will die and go to you, your heaven or your hell? Your dogma doesn't relate to mine. Mine doesn't relate to yours. When I die, I go my some way. When you also die, I also go your some way. So when we go back to understand, these particular things are going to cause unity. We are going to be, um, uh, uh, we are going to have one mindset and work together for the progress of the whole nation. The progress of the whole nation. The yeah. deities we have here, I know you can't mention all of them. Mm -hmm. Are they okay? Are they still powerful? Yes. Uh, so what is making them silence? What is making them... They are, they are powerful. And one thing I want to say is that for them, there are people or there are beings that are very patient. For instance, if you should go and curse with any deity who is an animist, when I say animist means that they live within any natural... Uh -huh. When you go and curse, they won't just get up to go and then do what you have commanded them to go and do. They're going to sit back take the issues into consideration, and then judge. They're going to weigh. Who is at fault? If I'm the one at fault, the, the curse I've gone to lay will come back to me. If not, it will go back to the one I have cursed. So for them, they're very, very patient. So they, can, they may say the things do, but they will be waiting for the right time to act. That's one. So they are not silent. They are not silent. They are very, are very they awake. Pure? Are they clean? They are pure. They are clean. I just don't know how to... <laughs> So when they see people tagging them as demons mm -hmm. and all these things, how do they react? Like They have been revealing themselves to those that tag them. Within my community, I would not like to mention anything because of um, privacy issues, but I have heard the instances, about two or three instances, whereby a particular pastor in my community has said that one of um, the, the, the senior divinities in my community has revealed itself or, yes, himself to him severally to communicate with him about how things are supposed to be done within the community. And he was lying? And he was speaking it to the church members. Was he so, saying the truth or he was just lying? Um, from my side... He was blabbing? I would say... I would say yes. Okay. He was speaking the truth. Okay. Because looking at the things he said and things that were going within that particular moment, you see that the things he was saying are true. Okay. So, so that means that they are still there. They are still as purified as the... As as the Almighty God created them to be, they are still in that same format. They haven't changed. 
They have never changed. The way they are, they are in that same format. You understand? And they love us. So, so much. And we are misbehaving. Mm, that's, it's not our doing so. It was after white man brought the redacted Bible to come and enslave. And then later on, things changed. Do you that's see why. hope for us in future? Oh, I see hope. That? That one day, the African child or the African will stand up and say, I am a proud African with my roots as the African traditional religion. Because in, in majority of cases or issues coming out now, we are seeing that the youth are now getting awake. They are now understanding that majority of these particular foreign or Western uh, religions we have were things that were brought in to control our mindset. For us to remain poor, for us to put our hands into our like, thing and watch and believe the white man that he can do everything to, uh, to help us. We are now seeing that a majority of the things that are being, brought up, are being brought up, if you understand those things clearly, they are things that are supposed to shape your life in the way of a movement. And there are no things that are supposed to be there to give you hope. You are watching Revelations with Mami Grace and Numbo Tete Diaka. Diaka. Diaka, the second. Yeah. Okay, so Numbo, um, of late, some traditional people or worshippers or some of your people mm -hmm. are complaining that when they are doing things at the National Theatre, uh, uh, Independence, Independence Square, Square, and, and you know before they mm -hmm. will be doing at Ame and mm -hmm. and all that, I learned they've not been calling or they've not been adding them. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about this? Yes, I heard of that, but then I've not been installed. I quite remember it was within the era of um, Atame or so. Uh -huh that the women were supposed to go for the traditional prayer for the um, ceremony to be open, and then uh, they failed to call them. That's because they were realizing that, or they were believing that Ghana is a Christian nation. One thing I want people um, who are in um, um, politics to understand is that Ghana is a multi-denominational country. We have traditionalists here, we have Muslims here, we have traditionalists here. We even have Hindus and Buddhists amongst us. You have to accept them for who they are. So whenever something of this sort is being done, or is being done on a national scale, when you call the Christian, you remember to call the Muslim, remember to call the traditionalists too, because they are the owners of the land. They are those that when they speak, things are supposed to go on well. Hmm. You can just imagine the case whereas someone um, um, is supposed to say a Christian prayer, is being said, Islamic prayer is being said. And then how the contraction prayer has been neglected. There are, there are things that you understand, things that will ring so much in your mind. Ah, why are they neglected? Are they not worshipping the same God they're also worshipping? What, what have they done wrong or what are they doing wrong? But when you get there, you understand that they have not done anything wrong, but rather those that are supposed to link them up are not playing their cards well because they are thinking that I am a Christian. It's, a, it's an Abrahamic religion. Islam, same. So if I see Muslim in a way, indirectly, that particular person is my brother or my sister. But for these particular people, my religion is telling me that they are evil. They have idols. They are wicked. They are bad. They will go to hell. So if I should call them to come and officiate at my program, you don't take care. In fact, when we die, we all go to hell. That's the notion some people do have. So by so doing, they neglect us. But I'm telling you there is hope. Because wherever you step your foot as a traditional high priest or priestesses, within greater Accra, that particular land is yours. Whether they call you or not, in Ghana, we have something we call Botri Ashigente. Wherever you are, a time will come. They'll come back to you to come and seek your help. And that is where you have to tell them whatever they have been doing that. At this particular point, you're supposed to call me here. You feel to. Now you are back. I'll not pay you back in your own coin. I'll help you. I'll solve whatever is happening. But remember that whenever such occasions are being done, remember to what? Inform me or remember to call me to come and what? Officiate. And that is what is going to make the whole thing work, to become balanced. To become balanced indeed. Okay, so um, your people, mm -hmm. if I say your people, the Wulomos, the old, the new, are they putting any stretches for your people? Mm, I'll say yes. They are putting things into place. It's not within every particular community to, ba community to do bad. It's in some various communities. And I think since, since some have set a pace, the other seen it to also emulate. Seen it to emulate. Yeah. This is one thing I want to ask about the beaches in Ghana. Mm -hmm. 
I know wool almost have a bit uh, kind of upper hand. Mm -hmm. I think because guns have the upper hand on the coast on the coast or the seas or whatever you call it, the fishing and mm -hmm. blah blah, they live mm -hmm. close to the sea. So it's very important to you people. When you travel and you go to the beaches and you go to they, you see how they've done to they've treated the sea and what they are doing there. And you see the sea here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Have you are you people planning you particularly, this question is good for you. What do you have in mind for the sea or the beaches in Ghana? You see the sea itself has a divinity in it. That's the one in Ghana we call as Nai. Good. Aside that, we have other divinities that also work with the sea. For instance, Chawe, for instance, my deity also works with the sea. That's why I have this particular thing here, this shell from the sea over here. Uh -huh. So, coming to the question you are asking, from my side, I think I can't do that alone. Other traditional leaders within the community are supposed to join me. Aside that, to our politicians, our member, members of parliament, our assemblymen are also supposed to put some measures into practice. I may um, sit with maybe other um, wulome or other traditional leaders and then bring out rules and laws that no one should go to the beach to maybe go and then defecate or go and dump rubbish or maybe something of that sort. But whilst we are saying that, what measure uh, 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 is the member of parliament or the assembly member also putting into place for those things to be place at the right side. If I'm saying don't go to the, um, go, don't go to private at the seashore, it means that I have to get to a public toilet. That is going to be very affordable. So, by so doing, that particular aspect um, is not an aspect for the traditional leader. But it's, a mem it's, a, it's an aspect for the member of parliament or the assembly member. So, they are those that are supposed to work hand in hand with the traditional authorities to set up those particular places what, um, um, uh, to make those places available. So that those people going out there Whenever traditional leaders also give out the uh, rule that do not go out there to that particular side, they will not go because they know that as I don't go here, whatever I'm supposed to go and do, that can do those same things over here too as well. So why should I live here and go there? Why should I live here and go there? Yeah. I'm coming to ask you a very difficult question. Mm -hmm. I try and answer. Okay. Okay. This Ghan land mm -hmm. belongs to Ghans. Mm -hmm. Why are your people selling all the lands in Ghan and selling it double, double? for double people. Why? This one, this particular issue goes above my understanding. But with my um, understanding as a young guy, I want to say this. Where do you come from? Me? Yes. Me, I come from many places. Mm, no, I mean your particular origin. My, I had, like I'm saying, I have a bad blood, like from eight places. There's a particular one that we can link you up to, we can trace your ancestors to. I mean, that particular route. Like my father's side or my yes, mother's side? Yes, Because my father is from four places. My mother is from four places. I don't know where I come from. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've gotten your point. Yes. Now, let's assume that we have someone coming from Ashanti region mm -hmm. into Greater Accra. And that particular person wants to set up a place where he or she will put his or her head. Uh -huh. And the people come over to see you. You can't tell them... No, we will, we will not give you a place to stay because you are not staying here with us or are not a member of us. Now, the Ghana people believe in this, this culture of assimilation. We have it in Ghana by name Ablukuma, Abakuma. So that, means, so that means that for others out there to come and what? Live with us. Uh -huh. So they, they, they were that free to the extent that they will even allow anyone at all to come into their midst. They will give you. I remember hearing some particular stories from my community. So I put from different towns came and then they were like, oh, I'm staying here. The land is too big, so you have to take this particular aspect. Stay here with your family. And then by so doing, such people have been inculcated into the family of that particular person. That's the one that issued the land, the land out. Now, the same thing is also going on as and now. But as and now, it's like within Accra or the greater Accra region, we have become populated. But for that reason, the scramble for land has become something that has... <laughs> I would say it's a, it's a hot kick. Looking at things, the selling of lands at double-double ratios, I, I have not seen that. I have not heard of that one, that particular thing too as well. But all I know is that we, traditional leaders, are giving or have given lands out to people that are not even part of us to come and what, stay with us because we believe that we traditional leaders alone or we traditional Ghana people alone or Gadangwe people alone cannot develop the community. 
So they should come and live with us. So that the ideas they are having will be uh, 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 put together with what we also have to help raise the standard of the community world high. Okay. Since you don't know how they are selling lands double double, I will leave this one. But I'm telling you this. Mm -hmm. You are you are Wuloma mm -hmm. at Bo. Mm -hmm. I have lands there. Mm -hmm. If I have issues on any of my <laughs> lands, I'll come to you there. You call your deity for them. <laughs> Okay, so you are answering questions that are not part of your topic. The, the fact that you are here and I am seeing that you are well endowed, I will ask you all the important questions I want to ask. Before we learn, you, you, you do some rituals, like killing of a cow, and then you put it in the sea. That the, the sea should bring out lots of um, fishes for your people to have money. Mm -hmm. Is it true? I, do you still practice that? It is true. It is still being practiced. Okay. But you see, one thing about the Ghana people is this. Our traditions are our traditions. But when you enter, we have variations. So this killing of a cow thing may be for a particular community and not for a particular community. Okay. When you come to my town, for instance, whenever we are getting closer to the period of um, home work, there is a particular aspect whereby fishermen are going to be sent out there to go and bring a special fish by name chili, which is being used for uh, the annual feast. Uh -huh. So by so doing, they have to make sure that the laws are set into place that nobody is supposed to go to war, nobody is supposed to go fishing. And then only those, those two particular aspects or those two particular um, um, teams within, within, their, within their canoes are being asked to go. Before they go from my community, it's libations that are being poured. And by so doing, they go and then they come with the kind of fishes that they have or they get. I remember around four years ago, five years ago, I was present at La. And then by then, the fishermen have also embarked over the sea to go and bring their, their chili. I was I saw what came out. So I was also curious, like, just like the way you asked the question. I asked the man, I saw, saw that. I, I saw a post on Facebook that a cow is being killed um, for the sea deity to bring bumper harvest. Is that true? He said, no. That was when I realized that, no. What I saw over there was true, though, but it was for a particular community. So those over here, what they do differs from what those over here do. But at the long run, they all end up getting the same result. Okay, but uh -huh. they do something. They, they all do. do, even if not the same. They do they something do, similar to that. Do something similar to that. Yeah. Okay. So, no more. what about the no noise making thing? Mm. You see, the no noise making thing is one of our most important aspects of the Gan traditional spirituality. We have so many days to make noise. When you get to the street of Accra, you hear people preaching up and down, selling up and down, cars, honking, drumming, dancing, clubs, pubs, so, so many. So if you have done all of this and you are being told at a particular moment to keep silent for, let's assume, a week, two weeks, three weeks, or a month, uh, should they see it as something weird? No. What actually brings out this particular thing is that we Ghana people, <clears throat> as spiritual people, like I told you, we have a period that you are supposed to keep quiet. You are supposed to keep mute because during that particular period, we have a right we call Madumo. By so doing, we've gone into our Ngamo, or our, say our traditional farm, uh -huh, whereby the Ma, some will say so, um, Bambara beans, some also call it millet, it differs. Uh -huh, whereby those particular ones are, have been gone to be planted. So when the leaders go over there to plant, there's only one key thing that is needed. Then that particular thing is rain. So at this particular moment, the high priests that went to officiate are now going to go into their temples to fast and then to pray to ask God Almighty through the uh, who were in the Jemawadi to bring rain to fall because those particular things planted over there, as they germinate, they're going to tell you how the town is supposed to be for the next year. So when they are being told that at this particular moment, we are going to seek the face of God Almighty. For that reason, do not make noise for a week, a month, or something of that sort. That's just supposed to adhere because before you got here, you realize that these things were being done before you came here. So by so doing, they, uh, they, 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 the Ulo men head over, they request for rain, and then God being so faithful, the rains also fall, then the millet or the uh, germinate, and then from there they're able to tell how the next year is going to be what? Be ahead. So I also use a particular medium to tell those people living with us within Accra that we are getting nearer. So if they know there is something more they have to sell. They should try and sell it more. Because now, the way things are going, the rule of men and the traditional leaders will not sit down and allow anyone to breach any traditional law that has been set into place.
to make Greater Accra a stable place for me, for you, and then everyone living within Ghana. Mm. This is beautiful. Oh, okay. So if they make noise, the thing is not go going to be germinating. Oh, it will germinate, though, but it's like you've breached a law. Is and it that you punishment. call some gods that you don't want us to make noise? No. At that particular moment, we are fasting. Okay, so... No. I want to ask you this question. Let's assume you have your father. You're going to your father to make a request. You are hungry. You want your father to give you money. Do you go there in humility or you go there with loud noise making? That's true. I remember my father did that thing to me some time ago. I was around 13, 14. I was already starving. I went to him. You should give money. He was not minding me. He was talking to a different someone else. So I shouted, I'm hungry. Give me the money. Let me eat something. He was like, eh. Hey. And from that particular, particular aspect, I was able to understand what my father did. So comparing that particular thing to our act of worship, it tells you something important that we are supposed to humble ourselves before God Almighty. So that at this particular moment, he will let the rain what? The rain fall. He will let the rain fall in. This is a beautiful, 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 beautiful episode. Um, I want you to pray for Ghana. Mm -hmm. But before then, how do you see Revelation Show in one minute? I think Revelation Show is one of the biggest shows I've ever seen in my life. Because anyone at all with such an idea would be like, okay, I'm setting this place up for only Christians, up for only Muslims, up for only uh, 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 traditionalists. But looking at um, um, Revelation Show, for instance, it accepts every particular one despite the faith the person has. Mm -hmm. To the extent that even sitting them together to share ideas in terms of debating, whereby you're going to understand that, oh, okay, so this particular aspect, I'm right here, I'm wrong here. My doctrines here are right, my doctrines here are wrong. So I think it's something laudable. I think it should be held up in high esteem. It's very good. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Numbo, for coming. Now I want you to pray for Ghana. I go check me, me. Ni me ke na me. Me na ashi me. Me na ashi suha. Ni ma suha na ma suha. Oboloma wo. Oboloma wo. Oboloma wo. Oboloma wo che dan pon kwami ko nga sasi afia. Na bu klen klen wo cho. No jo nu bleku no ni go wo ke chon bo ni. O bi age chon ni no shele mo ke no ya. Afi wo jaku manga na fe no. I go, 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 I Ni shanjo ni mlakwa awo. Na ni wacho ane huwe wanche ni. Ni shanjo ni mlakwa. Na afi yo klopon. Ke woku tu. Nye ba hiya konye nwa. Nye gbele akbe nye ha awo. Asa manye blu 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 hiko na menu we. Gbonge me asa abli me. Blu blu mfe mwa ba hiko na menu. Akpala me. Akpo dingla nye fe nye ba hiya konye nwa. Nye gbele akbe nye ha awo. Mene gbi suha ni ma suha na ma suha. Wani chumwa ni wacho ane yo manji. Na kaji wanche ni mene. Wache nye ye fon na. Wanche nye manji na ke na. Mene nyengwe wogbe. Oba ta shiniki. Shimbo, jaku mani cheme ba tu. Ke chon wo hii. Ni ba shewo no. Bi ane he jole bemi. Ni bi a hii nchomo. Nye bi tete ni saka me hii nye kusumi ame mpote tete ye. Amwa me njufu ye na. Ni wo na. Nuno ke shuwa shimbo haa nye ni. Nye jaku mani nye mwa miye. No fe eno ni jiye. Ke ji hilo na. Nye ya nye buwa wo. Ni mumu na hume. Nye ya nye buwa wo. Ni wo chwa ne hume. Wache eko ni wo ba shiku. Cheme ni ba wazi ni azi ni ba uwo. Ni fe nye ba hiyo kuwe. Na me ni ba chwa jaku mangana ke machike. Kutu ambi blu blu. Me ni wale meke. Me ni wale fe. Ame wame fa ni ba hiyo kuna ameno. Ame wame wame flo ba shi wano. Ni wame hiyo nye loy. Titri ke wame kroko me ni yo. Ke mangbe na hiyo loy kroko me fe. Nye wame flo ba shi wame no. Nye wame hiyo fe fana me sa fe tu nwe. No fe no kona mba chwene yo manji. Ka me gba pana drwen ba shi wame milishin. Na. Ekwa tashi ni kwa ba ni na ye. Wa hiyo fe fana wo sa fe tu nwe. Kwa fe kwa gba shi wame shi. Twa li mani drwen fi wano. No. Numo, thank you so much for praying for Ghana. So when you pray on your temple to pray this prayer for me. Tell your deity that these rains that are going to come, it shouldn't take any human being. <laughs> so, Obian Prapra Negatem, I have started campaigning for this. Obian Shanegatem, 
on proper and a gata mune su ya e to ye and fanny pa an uncosted bonny bebrebia u be anka se uti old store mua ubeka so beka wire reno no why any ye a few we yem pese disaster bea ebesi ye so um numbo your last words and your advice to the public. Okay. So what I want the whole public to know is that in the first place, once again, we're getting nearer to the traditions of the, um, 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 of the Ghana land, of the Greater Accra region. And all indigenous and non-indigenous should accept it. They should just join hands with us together so that we celebrate this particular year's festival in peace. At the same time, too, I'm telling everyone who is practicing the African traditional religion to, be feel, to feel proud. He or she should accept it that that's the faith. And that's what is going to help that particular person prosper. Finally, I'm sending this particular uh, message to uh, our Minister of Education that the Ghana land is for the Ghana people. For that reason, in everything we do, Ghana and Dangme comes first. We beg him, he should go over and revise what he is trying to implement so that we have peace. And then our Ghana language will stand on its toes. Child, you might need to run for you all. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Revelations. This is what we want to do. We want to put the map of Ghana out there. Thank you so much for watching. Your contributions and your um, corrections are welcome. So same time next week, Revelations will come your way with another episode. Uh, Numbo, thank you so much for coming. God bless us all. Same time next week. This program is fully sponsored by Global Eagle Revival Outreach Ministries, a not-for-profit organization. To support our broadcast to reach others like you, kindly send support to Zenith Bank, Ghana. Account number 6012402066. Six. Account name, Global Eagle Revival Outreach Ministries, La Trade Fair Branch, Birmingham. Mobile Money Account, Merchant, 0544859007. Name, Global Eagle Revival Outreach Ministry. Reference, Revelations or TWMG, Time with Mommy Grace.